Thank you, General Lady. Ms. Kaptur. Thank you, Mr. Chairman uh, and Chairman Bernanke. Thank you for your patience. Um, most of my questions will be yes and no, but I want to begin by saying that uh, very privileged and powerful uh, bankers in our country have hurt our nation deeply. Uh, yet it seems that uh, they get special treatment by the Federal Reserve and other financial regulatory agencies that should be protecting the public interest. And these bankers have earned huge profits for themselves, but when their imprudent behavior causes vast economic dislocation, they throw the cost of that on the backs of the taxpayers raising our national debt. Taxpayers who are hurt, homeowners um, lose their homes, people lose jobs, people lose their companies, bankruptcies go up. But they don't get the same treatment. So I'm interested in the favoritism exhibited toward these bankers as well as the non-transparency of financial rescues being arranged by the Fed and other federal regulatory agencies. The presidents of the regional reserve banks of the Fed uh, extraordinarily have been expressing concern about what's going on and the power of the New York Fed, uh, Kansas City Fed, St. Louis Fed, the Richmond Fed, uh, shockingly, uh, signed an agreement uh, with you, uh, an unprecedented agreement, uh, where uh, you agreed to absorb any losses uh, that would be incurred by the Fed um, the Treasury actually signed that agreement. Um, and so my first question is, yes or no, do you support the concept of having the presidents of each of the Federal Reserve Banks join the ranks of your Board of Governors and be nominated by the President and confirmed by the Senate to have a more representative Fed? No. Thank you. For the record, before this month is out, how much TARP money um, Will AIG, can you provide for the record before this month is out, how much TARP money AIG has dispersed since January 1st of this year and who were the recipients? Can you provide that for the record? I think so, but I can't do that, do that here. Can you do it within the month? They've already produced the information on their counterparties. I think that information is in the public, public domain. How many of those disbursements and which derivative contracts were paid out at 100% on the dollar and which were not? All contracts of which there was a legal contract binding were paid out 100 percent because there was no bankruptcy allowed. You need a system where we can, where we can renegotiate those things, but we don't have a system like that. Uh, well, we are going to um, want as much detail as you can provide for the record um, because the Fed is really heavily involved in that. Am I correct? The Fed is involved uh, very unwillingly because there is no good system for addressing the failure of a major financial institution. How much more of our rising debt is being um, provided by foreign creditors now as our debt rises? Can you provide that for the record? Um, actually less, because, less than it has been because we know the current account deficit has been declining and that current account deficit measures the flow of new lending from foreign uh, creditors to the United States. As the federal deficit has gone up, the private borrowing has gone down. Thank you. We'd like that for the record. How many no-bid contracts has the Fed now signed with private money management firm BlackRock and any of its subsidiaries? We have signed several because of exigencies of time. All that information is going to be provided in this monthly report, which we're now releasing to the Congress. Will the contracts be released to the Congress? I believe so, yes. Uh, what is the value of the assets being managed by BlackRock and any of these contracts in total? I don't have information. Will that be provided for the record? Oh, yes. What is the Fed paying BlackRock for these services? Will that be provided to the record? We have a committee which has gone through and, and made a whole set of recommendations based on carefully considered analysis and consultation. And uh, they'll be writing a great deal of information. I don't remember every single decision that they made, but I would like to defer to their decisions. Do you know, um, Mr. Chairman, which foreign countries and companies are a part of BlackRock's transactions? I don't understand the question. What other business does BlackRock do besides service the Fed? They have a very large uh, asset management business. But you wouldn't necessarily be aware of what those relationships are? Yes or no? Not necessarily. Are you aware that one of the contracts BlackRock manages for the Fed may be compromised, and that is the one, um, probably more than one is compromised, dealing with Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae? And I just wish to state this for the record. 
Uh, Lawrence Fink, who is the head of BlackRock, which now is 47% owned by Bank of America, in which uh, the um, uh, Mr. Summers, who has the National Economic Planning Council, uh, is a um, major investor, uh, just got several no-bid -bid contracts from the Fed, including one to manage Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae's troubled portfolios. I think that's one of the contracts you signed with BlackRock. Did the Fed know that Mr. Fink is the person who first created the collateralized mortgage obligation uh, when he headed first Boston, and then he brought that instrument to Freddie Mac and initially sold it to them for over a billion dollars of such obligations, making huge profits for himself and his firm. He is now the Fed's go-to man through his firm on Freddie Mac workouts. I have a question about the revolving door, and how do you protect the public again? against his potential and that company's potential conflict of interest or possible self-dealing that relate to his own and his firm's historic involvements with those mortgage portfolios? The Federal Reserve is a separate institution from Freddie Mac. We have nothing to do with Freddie Mac. I don't understand your question. You have signed a contract with BlackRock to manage the Freddie and Fannie portfolios, have you not? The troubled mortgages within those portfolios? Not to my knowledge. I understood it was one of the four or five contracts that you'd signed with BlackRock. I'll have to go back and check on that. We would appreciate that very much. Ms. Ryan has one final question. Um, since we're before you have to leave, Chairman, I figured I'd, I'd ask a second. We, we're going to make two big fiscal policy uh, decisions uh, just this summer. Talked about cap and trade uh, briefly, and then health care legislation. Those are the two big fiscal dockets. Uh, and that's going to impact our borrowing and our deficits. No two ways about it. The bill that's moving to the floor that's already out of the Commerce Committee on cap-and-trade auctions off 88% of the permits, which therefore dramatically reduces the ability to do the rebates, such as you discussed, as, as needed to be offsetting to blunt the negative fiscal impact on the economy. Gives away, yeah, did I say auctions off? Thank you. Gives away 88% of the permits. Given that the legislation we're looking at gives away 88% of the permits, drying up the money to do rebates, do you think that that has a negative effect on the economy? My understanding is that they'll be given away and then passed through to consumers. Is that correct? No, they're given away to, to the various industries. If, if you give it away to the industries but prices still reflect the cost of the permit, then it's basically a, a money being given to the industries. But the targets will be the same. So the emissions targets will be as aggressive. But the point I'm trying to make is the revenue – from auctions which are needed to do rebates will not be there because the, uh, the, the permits will be given away to the it, firms. It's certainly true. If the permits are given away, then you don't get the revenue from the auctions, absolutely. And therefore, if there's not an offsetting rebate anywhere close to one for one, do you think that that therefore has negative effects on the economy? It could, yes. Um, but I, again, my understanding is that, is that some of these um, auction, uh, some of these permits that are being given away that are being required to be passed through to consumers which has a different effect in terms of spending, but uh, to some extent goes against the, the premise of the policy, which is to try to reduce energy consumption, since if consumers don't see higher prices, right. Correct. they won't reduce their consumption. Yeah, I, I think a lot of us would, would, would question the efficacy or the logic of, of requiring it to be passed through to the consumers because it counts against the whole notion of the, of the program. That's right. Um, let me ask you one final question. Do you think it makes sense that we need to spend more in order, on entitlements in order to save money on entitlements? What I mean when I get at that is we're in the middle of this health care debate. Uh, the discussion uh, revolves around um, raising about $1.3, $1.2 trillion in new revenues to spend on a new uh, entitlement program that will be created for health care for the under-65 population. Um, we already spend more than two and a half times per person on health care uh, compared to any other country in the world. Is it a good idea from a fiscal standpoint to increase that by another $1.2, $1.3 trillion over the next 10 years? And is that the best way to save more money in the long run uh, with these entitlement programs? So we've got two health care entitlement programs already, Medicare, Medicaid. We're going to create a third one now uh, with a huge expenditure uh, requirement with, with a uh, revenue stream that may or may not meet that, that expenditure requirement. Nevertheless, it's a larger tax and spend program than what we have right now. Is that the right way to go down toward containing our fiscal problems, in your well, opinion? From a fiscal perspective, the reforms to health care need to address the cost issue. Now, you might want to 
the, the questions about how to change the structure of the healthcare system or whether to do it or not or how the government's role should change if, if at all. But if you don't get control of the cost of health care, then, then the fiscal issues are very serious. And in particular, for example, Medicare trustees assume that health care costs are going to grow at only 1 percent faster than per capita income. In fact, they have been growing at 2.5 percent faster than per capita income, so we need some substantial cost controls just to get down to the Medicare trustees' production. Do you think creating a new entitlement and, and more spending and taxing is the way to contain those costs? Part of the reform effort has got to be addressing the cost somehow, the cost of per capita health care and the growth in that rate. So that has got to be a big part of the program. If you don't do that, then just adding programs would be a big problem, yes. Okay. Thank you. I ask unanimous consent before concluding that members who did not have the opportunity to ask questions of our witness be given seven days to submit questions for the record. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much.